Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been a big fan of the Lenovo ThinkBook laptops, and I just got a new one in to take a look at. This is their ThinkBook 13S G4, the fourth generation of this design. And this is a very nice little 13-inch lightweight laptop running Windows, of course. And this is the Intel version of it, although they do have an AMD version available as well. And we're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $1,000 and then goes up from there based on configuration. The model we have here is their lower end specification. It has an i5-1240p processor along with eight gigabytes of RAM. The RAM is not upgradable. And I would suggest if you're doing anything beyond word processing and email that you look at going for the 16 gigabyte model at a minimum, especially for graphically intensive tasks. So the performance you see out of this will be good, but I think it will be a little better if you have more RAM on board, especially for things that go beyond basic tasks. This has 256 gigabytes of NVMe storage. It has a Gen 4 SSD inside. You can upgrade that, but again, not the RAM. For a display, we've got our 13.3 inch display on this one. They did provide a slightly higher resolution display than the base model. This one has a 2560 by 1600 IPS display. This has got a matte finish, so it's not all that glossy. And this one, though, is not a touch display, but they do have a touch option available. The brightness on this display is 300 nits. The touch display goes up to about 400 nits, so it is a little brighter. And it goes flat here to the desk, as you can see, but this is not a two-in-one. And like many laptops out there these days, this has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it is a little higher than the 16 by 9 displays we saw a couple of years back. You'll notice there is a webcam here at the top. There are two webcam options. Ours came with the 720p version. Not bad, uh, not great, but it's certainly enough, I think, to get your Zoom calls done and that sort of thing. You will notice that there is a, a little light sensor here. This is for the display brightness, and it can't be used for biometrics, at least on the base level camera. And like other Lenovo laptops, there is a physical shutter here at the top to block the camera lens. Now, it is very lightweight and well-constructed. It comes in at about 2.75 pounds or 1.25 kilograms. And it's very well balanced too. So when you close the display lid here, you can open it up with one hand without everything coming up with you. The keyboard will bounce a little bit maybe, but by and large, it holds itself together pretty well. And it's got a lot of nice metal around it to give it a more premium feel. Now it's got a very nice keyboard and trackpad as most of these Lenovo laptops do. The keys are well spaced, they're nice and big. You actually get a good amount of travel on these two, so you've got a very nice typing experience on here. And if you're an author or somebody that's doing a lot of writing, the keys really give you a good response and it's a very comfortable typing surface for long duration work. So I think you're gonna like this quite a bit. The keyboard, of course, is backlit. The trackpad tracks well, nothing to complain about here. Lenovo's largely uh, come up with a good solution for their input uh, tools here, and they uh, don't try to rock the boat too often with changing this stuff up. So it's very solid here from a typing and tracking perspective. There is a fingerprint reader right here if you want to speed up your entry into the computer so you do have some biometrics available. As far as ports are concerned, you don't have many, but you've got some good ones. So we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports here. And by default, Thunderbolt ports are full service, meaning they support power in, video out, and of course, data devices. And this will work with the high-speed Thunderbolt devices along with USB devices. You have a full HDMI port over here as well for video output, so you have some different options for outputting video. You can, of course, plug this into a docking station or an external GPU to get more uh, performance out of it. On the other side, we have a headphone microphone jack, a full-size USB-A port, and you'll see it's got a little battery indicator next to it. That means that it will charge your devices even when the laptop is switched off. 
And then of course we have a Kensington lock here. Now this is not a fanless laptop. There is an air intake down here at the bottom. The fan isn't that loud even when the computer is under load. And most of the time when you're sitting idle or doing tasks that are not all that strenuous, you're not gonna hear that fan kick on. When you first get it, you're going to hear a lot of fan noise just because it does all of its Windows updates in the background. But after it's done with that and things settle down, it'll be a pretty quiet running laptop like it is right now next to me here on the desk. It's got speakers on the bottom here. They are downward firing, but they actually sound pretty good. It's not going to give you a great amount of bass, but the range of sound is better than expected. And of course, you can connect Bluetooth headphones or physical headphones to the headphone jack here on the side and get better audio quality, but it should be more than adequate for doing conference calls and that sort of thing. They also have some tools on board to assist you with your conference calls that you might be doing. Now, battery life on this is not spectacular. I'm gonna put the battery life at around six to eight hours, depending on what you're doing. If you're sticking to the basics, like word processing and email, you're going to be closer to the eight hour side, but if you're doing more strenuous tasks, probably in the six hour-ish range, and less if you're gaming or doing video editing or something. One other thing I would suggest you do is make sure that the best power efficiency option is selected here when you are on the battery and keep the display brightness down and that'll help you squeeze out a little bit more life. I would also suggest if battery life is important to you that you look at the lower resolution display which will consume less power. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We're gonna start at the basics and ladder our way up from there. We'll begin with some basic web browsing here using the Chrome browser. We are on my Wi-Fi 6 network here, and as you can see, everything is snappy and responsive, as you would expect out of a higher-end Windows device with the latest Wi-Fi radio on board. Now, we also did our YouTube video test where we load up a 1080p 60 frames per second video and see how it performs. Generally, it does pretty good, although occasionally I notice a frame drop here or there. Nothing significant that I could notice, but you will see it from time to time. And I think it might be due to the fact that this only has eight gigabytes of RAM on board, which might be uh, creating some difficulties in having enough memory that is available for both the system and the video to operate in. And so you saw this video played back fine with no drop frames, but a previous test that I ran had a few along the way. And I think it just might be due to the eight gigabytes on this system. And you may not see that with a 16 gigabyte configuration. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 236. That puts this right in line with current generation Intel processors and a lot farther ahead than the generation 213S that we looked at about a year or two ago. Now you can also do some limited video editing on these devices, although professional work will of course require a little more horsepower. I've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up right now with a 4K 60 frames per second project. And what I'm gonna do is drop that transition onto the timeline here. And as you can see, even with our limited amount of RAM, we are able to have those transitions render out here in real time without a lot of delay. So if you're doing basic stuff, kind of like the things that I do here on this YouTube channel, you can probably get it done here. Although the eight gigabytes of RAM on this particular configuration will challenge things a bit. Let's take a look now at gaming. So this is Red Dead Redemption 2. We were running it at 1920 by 1200 at the lowest settings. And you're going to see this perform just under 30 frames per second, typically in the 25 frames per second category. Very playable, uh, but of course not up to what you would expect with a gaming laptop. But of course this one is a lot more portable. And if you attach an external GPU, of course, you can take advantage of that for more performance, but still very playable here and on par with other Intel machines from this generation. We also ran GTA 5. This one we did at the native resolution of the display at 2560 by 1600. And we were getting a locked frame rate essentially of 30 frames per second. We did turn off VSync and all the other things that locked the frame rate in. And for whatever reason, it was just staying at 30, but still uh, at low settings here at the native resolution of the display. This is a very playable and very uh, good looking experience here. So that was fun to see. And we also ran another older game, The Witcher 3, which can often be very challenging. This one we ran at 1920 by 1200. And as you can see, we're above 30 frames per second here most of the time, minus that little lag hit there. 
Uh, so generally, you'll see 30 to 45 frames per second on that one. So all in, even with a low amount of RAM, this one actually did pretty well. But you will encounter games that might need more memory. And so some games may not load at all because of that memory restriction. So that's another reason why if you're looking to do a little more than the basics here, 16 gigabytes on this model makes a lot of sense. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,548. You'll note that that is not all that much more than the second generation machine we looked at with an 11th generation Intel i5. And that's because the graphics side of this chip hasn't been updated all that much since the prior generation. But you'll note the CPU performance is running a little better on this chip because it does have more processing cores. So there is a performance boost here over the prior generation, but it's going to be mostly on the CPU intensive side that you'll notice those things. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a score of 98.1%. That is a passing grade, which indicates that this machine will keep its performance consistent even when it's placed under heavy sustained load. And a little bit earlier, we booted up Ubuntu to see how well it can handle Linux and other alternative operating systems. Everything got detected properly. That includes the display, the audio, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth. Everything just seemed to work and perform as well as it did on the Windows side. So I think it's going to work well for those of you who are looking for a computer that runs things other than Windows. And altogether, I think this is a really solid, lightweight, portable laptop. It's very powerful for general computing tasks. The battery life isn't great on it, but if you are someone who doesn't need all day out of your portable laptop, you should do fine here. I like how well built it is and how balanced everything feels, and there's not many compromises on the performance side here. And if you do need more graphical horsepower, you could dock it to a GPU with one of the Thunderbolt ports. So altogether, a really nice compact laptop from Lenovo. And that's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht. Amda Brown. Matt Zagaya. And Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.